welcome to Love Talk. Tonight we're talking about whether you can learn to love someone. Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about this? We hear a lot of people nowadays saying, you know, I, I used to be married, I used to be in a relationship, but I fell out of love mm -hmm. with that person. If you were ever in love with someone, it's because you learned to love that person. Mm -hmm. You learned mm -hmm. as you learned more about them. So if you fell out of love, can't you learn to love them again? Surely Absolutely. that's possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see many couples, they get back together after a few years. Mm -hmm. But you also see, like you were saying, couples who've been married for 20, 30 years, suddenly, mm -hmm. I don't love you anymore. So, you know. Yeah. And, and today we're going to talk about this because we want to help you who are in a relationship, who are in a marriage, and you probably are subscribing to this idea that you, 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 you fell out of love with someone mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. There is, and that's what we're talking about tonight. First, let's see what these people have to say about what love is. It's... Hmm. I don't know if there's any real definition of love. Ooh, that's a heavy question. Love. Um, I think that love is when you put someone before yourself, it's definitely more than just a feeling. It's an openness and uh, it's an energy. That's the closest I can get to it, I think. Love is overcoming the differences that you two have and, and learning to find the imperfection and, and working with it. You give all of yourself to somebody. You never expect anything back. My definition, definition of love is God. It is. I, I think that God is love, so love is God. Love is the innermost feeling one can present to another person who understands them. Being in love makes me feel better about myself. All of the good things that I know are already there just feel highlighted in me. It just makes me feel like I can face the world. Just pure happiness and everything is right with the world, nothing could go wrong. It's an out-of-body feeling. That excited feeling to see them come home or to see their face after a long time of not seeing them. Warm fuzzies, that little increase in the heart rate, that little tingling on the skin, and also at the same time, a real sense of groundedness. So it's like having this floor underneath me that's always there holding me up. It makes me feel expansive. It makes me feel like I can take on the world and I can accomplish my dreams. I can help other people accomplish their dreams. And you just become this better person and you have that little hole in your heart that was missing and now it's filled because you have love. When you care about someone more than you care about yourself and you would do anything for that person. To me, love is a feeling of winning. When you're winning, you're happy, you're free, you're honest, and it's a way of showing your light that you are the best version of yourself. That's what love is. Very, very interesting. There was a guy who did not even know how to describe love. Anyway, I would like to remind our viewers at home that we have a Facebook page, a website, lovetalkshow.tv and that it's also very very easy for you to get in contact with us maybe you want to ask us a question a more confidential uh, question you want to know something well email us on lovelab at lovetalkshow.tv absolutely now uh, something we we really want to drive home in terms of the message here tonight mm -hmm. is that you know, a, a, an easy way to quit a relationship is to say that you no longer love that person. And that is not the solution. You know, you, nobody discards of a vintage, expensive car because they don't love that car anymore. It's, it's a vintage car. You have it because you're passionate about it. And of course, a relationship, it's not a car. But remember, when you started dating that person, you who are married, you who are about to get divorced, you who don't think this relationship is going to work. Remember when you started dating that person? You were fascinated about everything about this person. Even the things that today you say you hate. And you know why you hate those things? 
Because as long as you learned, you were learning to love this person mm -hmm. and everything about them, I'm sure your relationship was a success. The moment you stopped learning, on how to love this person, that's when things started to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting because people, uh, people who are in that situation, they probably got distracted along the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe with Facebook, with friends, with chat rooms and, and other things that are out there. And then you, you started looking at the person's flaws mm -hmm. and you, started, you stopped appreciating the person. You started comparing your partner with someone else. And this is where it all starts. Yeah, actually, we have um, a couple who attends our seminars who had an arranged marriage because mm -hmm. of their culture. Prior, you know, to to really getting to know each other, they didn't love each other. They got together. They got married because of the culture of the arranged marriage. But they learned to love each other. Today, yeah. they're really happy. They're in love. They've been married for. I think something like 15, 16 years. Yeah. So you can learn to love someone. And by the way, we are not advocating arranged marriages. Not now, enough. here's a video of uh, one of Elena's favorite movies. Uh, I've movie watched it five times. Five times. So basically the story is that they get together because they have to learn about each other. They don't really like each other. Actually, they hate each other's guts. But as they're getting to know each other because of a visa, situation that yeah. unravels. I don't want to tell you the movie, but <laughs> this is the end. This is how it ends, where they learn to love each other. Have a look. Thank you. Miss Tate. Yes. What? What? Hey. Andrew. Why, why are you panting? Because I've been running. Really, from Alaska? I need to talk to you. Yeah, well, I don't have time to talk. I need to catch a 545 to Toronto. Margaret. So I need the boxes to go out today. I want to make sure everything is safe. Margaret, time. stop talking! I gotta say something. Okay. So just take a sec. Fine. What? Three days ago, I loathed you. I used to dream about you getting hit by a cab or poisoned. Oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah, I told you to stop talking. Then we had our little adventure up in Alaska, and things started to change. Things changed when we kissed. And when you told me about your tattoo. Even when you checked me out when we were naked. Uh, naked? <laughs> well, I didn't see anything. Yeah, you did. But I didn't realize any of this until I was standing alone in a barn, wifeless. Now, you can imagine my disappointment when it suddenly dawned on me that the woman I love is about to be kicked out of the country. So, Margaret, marry me. Because I'd like to date you. reason why I've been alone all this time. I'm comfortable that way. And I think it would just be a lot easier if we forgot everything that happened and I just left. You're right. That would be easier. supposed to get down on your knee or something. 
I'm gonna take that as a yes. You see that if you haven't watched that movie, take uh, an evening very, and, very funny, and very watch nice. it. Uh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of romantic movies, but that one actually, actually works. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, th this thing of learning to love someone, yes. the reason why, Lena, some people think that it, it doesn't work like that and that it can't work like that is because people have this idea that when you fall in love with someone, it's because you see them you have this thing of love at first sight and you go crazy about the person. Mm, well, there is lust at mm -hmm. first sight. There's infatuation at first Not sight. Not love, because love, if you, go, if you look at the meaning of the word love, it's, it's, it's very deep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about you knowing the person, you knowing the little, everything that the person likes or the things that the person doesn't like. So much so that as, the year, as years go by, you tend to love the person even more. Mm -hmm. This is true love. When you hear that the person, oh, our marriage is boring, you know, we've been married for so long, it's because you lost focus. You mm -hmm. lost focus of what love and, and marriage is because it gets exciting even more as time goes by. Absolutely. So the idea is for you to, to keep discovering more about that person, to keep invest not investigating, that's probably the wrong word, but keep learning. You know, if there is mm -hmm. a book on what to learn about this person, you should know that book from back to front. We're going to go into a short break and we'll be right back to talk about this subject and also to hear the quiz that will happen here in a few moments with our guests tonight, Michael and Francesca. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, still on this subject, we have here uh, someone sent us the question of the week. Do you want to go ahead yeah. and read it? What should I do? What should I do? My partner disrespects me, cheats on me, and completely ignores me. I feel like I don't love him anymore. What should I do? Well, but that's a, a very different situation, mm -hmm. right? That's not the situation of falling out of love with someone. Mm -hmm. You're being disrespected. You're being taken for granted. Not to mention that if your partner is cheating on you, that can even affect your health. You never know what he can pick up while he's going around, right? Exactly. So that is a very different situation. I think if that's the case, you really have to evaluate if you want to be in a relationship like that. I think what we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier is people that uh, were compatible to start off with. They had a lot of things in common, but then because they allowed other things to get in the way, distractions, they now say, you know, we've fallen out yeah. of love. Just as an excuse to go and, and start dating mm -hmm. again and do other things. Yeah. You know, uh, I just would like to advise this woman who just asked this question that, you know, it's important that you do something about it. Because, uh, f first of all, he needs to see that you, you love yourself. Because if you carry on living like this, he's going to lose his respect for you even more because you're not doing anything about it. You know, and the longer you stay in that situation, the more hurt you will get mm -hmm. and uh, the harder it, it will be for you to heal from yeah. this kind of pain. Now, going back to what we were saying, the, the, the main subject of tonight's program, you know, you have to picture relationship very much like, uh, like getting a degree, like learning, getting a degree, right? You need to invest a lot of hours, a lot of time in getting to know that person getting to know what the person likes, what they don't like, uh, so that you can do more of the things that she likes and less of the ones she dislikes. And as you learn, you know, and getting a degree is a, is a hard, difficult process because you have to sacrifice, you have to spend a lot of times, nights while your friends are out partying, you are studying. But then again, you reap the benefits of that degree. You can do a lot of things that before you weren't able to do. That's mm -hmm. exactly how a marriage works. If you want a marriage to work, you're going to have to sacrifice mm -hmm. for the person, to try to understand the person. Because when you try to get into the person's mind, their, their, their way of thinking, that's when you truly start learning to love someone. I would even go as far as saying that when you were dating in the beginning, everything about the person's great. Because haven't, they haven't really allowed you mm -hmm. to see that negative side yet. Eventually, you will see that side. And it is then that you have to prove 
that you are strong enough to learn this person in spite of the imperfections. Yes, and every time, uh, you know, let's say that the person leaves, because I know, I, I know people, uh, we, we do speak to many couples, mm -hmm. and that, you know, after many years of marriage, you know, they call it a day. They say, you know, I don't love you anymore. The person is already in, uh, mature in mm -hmm. age, but they are going to start a new life now. And, and they don't even know why. They can't even say to the person, listen, this is because I'm leaving you because of this and that. They just say, you know, I've fallen out of love. But what does that mean anyway? Mm -hmm. It's one more thing that media and, and the movies came up with and mm -hmm. people decided to embrace. So I think that, well, I think I'm sure that love is a very rational thing. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting thing. Yeah, and it, that's, and that's mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah. That's the problem because people don't think like that. People think the opposite. That love is not rational. Mm -hmm. That love is crazy. That love is mad. That love is irrational. And it's, it's none of those mm -hmm. things. I mean, that's what people that's think. That's called passion. Yeah. But love, love is something that increases as time goes by. So don't worry, you who are about to commit to someone in marriage and you really love this person, but you're, you're afraid that you'll fall out of love, that you, you won't feel the same in 10 years' time, and maybe your friends are trying to get you to have cold feet, don't worry. Yeah. Because as long as you keep investing in that relationship, it's only going to get better and better. It's like the best wine. That the and older you get, the more expensive and the better it becomes. Indeed, and I advise you, run away from those friends because they don't know what love is mm -hmm. and probably they don't like to be alone by themselves, you know, and um, yeah. you are there, committed, and uh, they have nothing else to do than to say, you know what, marriage is boring. Yeah, absolutely. But they wish they were in a commitment relationship. Absolutely. Now, tonight we have a very interesting couple here with us tonight, and you'll see why. We're going to see their quiz uh, just now, but stick around for the interview as well because mm -hmm. they have a very interesting story. Let's see how they did in tonight's quiz. Welcome to our weekly quiz and today I have a very nice couple here with me. It's Michael and Francesca. Hi guys. Hi. Thanks for coming. Are you ready for this quiz? Yes, yes. we are. Yeah, we let's are see. We shall see. Right, so here are the rules of this quiz. You have 10 seconds to answer each question and every time you get it wrong, you will hear this sound. Okay, let's begin. And I'm going to start with you, Francesca. Okay. All right. Time on the clock now. What is Michael's favorite color? Oh, that's easy. Uh, blue. Correct. Okay. That one was easy. <laughs> Question number two. What is his favorite sport? Oh, that's easy as well, sir. Football. Yay! <laughs> you just scored one there. Right. Question number three. If Michael could go to any country on holiday, which would it be? Okay, that's more difficult. Where would he go? Ten seconds. Uh, Jamaica? No. America? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yay. Okay. Question number four. What's his favorite thing about you? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> You've got 10 seconds. He likes that cooked good food. No. Oh, okay. Um, Maybe. A smile. No. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, you're running no. out of time. Okay, okay, let me think. Yeah, you, you don't have any more time, Francesca. No. Forget about it. <laughs> so, he said that you are very supportive. Oh, okay. Nice. That's actually a very nice compliment. <laughs> Question number five. Hmm? Are you ready for the last okay, one? Okay, the last one. Come on, okay. let's do this. If you had to buy Michael a present he, he always wanted, what would that be? Um, a football. No. <laughs> Come on, be creative. What do men like? Um, Gadgets, oh, technology. Yeah, maybe a, a computer, uh, the latest one, the Mac one. Or That's correct. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't really count like a full point okay half a point because I helped ah. you anyway you've done really really well actually out of five you only got one wrong well done now Michael yes listen I'm not very well let's <coughs> see what's gonna happen to you because I was looking at your questions and I feared for you but never mind okay. are you ready let's go for it question number one if she could be an animal which, which animal would she be because, you know, women like animals sometimes. Does she like animals or not? She doesn't even like animals. Okay, but she did mention an animal. Um, Ten a seconds. lioness. You're almost there. Tiger. Yes! 
<laughs> Listen, I promise you, I, I never thought you'd get this one right. <laughs> Question number two. Yeah. What's her favorite shade of lipstick? Favorite shade of lipstick? Yes. Oh, we're talking something red. No. Come on, 10 seconds. Um, something dark. No. Something uh, chocolate. No. And you did not write, uh, get it right, I'm My afraid. <laughs> she said nude. Oh, come on. This she one said is what? Nude. Uh, nude colors. Nude colors? Okay, yeah, right. um, yeah, I thought so. I, you wouldn't know this one. Yeah, it's too advanced for you, for yeah, men. It's a bit too technical. Yeah. So, uh, question number three. Yeah. What is Francesca's favorite color? Favorite color? Yes. Um, I would play it safe and say one, but I'm going to be daring to say brown. No, come on, 10 Blue. seconds. No. So then it's red then. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Can you see we're actually cheering for you, me and her? Okay. Francesca, no more cheering for him. He okay. needs to find the answers by himself. I'm just trying to be a bit more daring. So. <laughs> You're doing well. Question number four. What's a favorite movie? Favorite movie? Yes. Um, she hardly watches movies. Don't say that because she has a favorite movie. A <laughs> uh, favorite movie, it has to be something along the line. Um, Ten long seconds. Long, it's a, a love life movie, it's got to be, surely. You mean a romantic a Yeah, romance? Roma a romantic flick. Yeah, your um, time is over. Okay. Yeah. It's actually Grease. What? Grease. Not Greece from Greasy, you know the move Greece? Are you serious? Yeah. You still have one question. All right. If you had to buy her an item that she always wanted, what would that be? Shoes. Loads of shoes. Uh, perhaps, but she did not mention that this time. Um, dresses. Yeah, she did mention dresses. Yeah. She actually said a red dress. Okay. Okay, so let's count it as half a point. Okay, anyway, you guys did really, really well. Okay. You know? <laughs> oh, poor Michael. Anyway, uh, I think you just got two right out of five. I mean, two. No, but if you add the halves together, that's three. Well, let's just say two, to be fair, because you did really, really well. Anyway, uh, that's all we have time for. And uh, let's get to know you a bit more on the next half of the program. Okay. Hello, welcome back to the studio. We have our lovely couple here with us, uh, Michael and Francesca, that you just saw on the quiz there. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, Michael, you lost to your wife on the quiz, 4-2. What, what happened? What happened there? Well, I'll tell you. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Oh. Okay. Just before we, we start, we did a little interview with Michael and Francesca. Here's how it went. Hi, my name is Francesca Lewis and I'm from London, Finsbury Park. My name is Michael, I'm from North London. I met my husband through uh, mutual friends. Uh, it was a good few years ago, oh, maybe about 10 years plus. No, sorry, 13 years ago. It actually was a bit difficult <laughs> because when I met him, he actually was seeing someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to declare my feelings for him, but I didn't know, I didn't know, I was innocent. I swear I was innocent. But I declared my feelings for him, which a woman doesn't usually do. But I had a strong feeling about him. So I was bold and spoke to him and told him how I felt. She's hard working, she's committed, she's always with me in everything that I do. What I like the most um, about my husband is that he's very charismatic. He's very bubbly and funny. And you know, he can turn any situation into something positive. Um, she laughs at my jokes. Well. The annoying habit that my husband has, or yeah, still have, is um, football. <laughs> it really annoys me when he's watching football. I'm trying to talk to him about something and he completely ignores me and that is... Uh. <laughs> the most annoying habit with Francesca is that she likes to talk to me of all times when I'm watching football. She probably said that I don't like to listen to her when I'm watching football, but this is what annoys me always when I'm watching football. Michael James Lewis, I love you and I can't imagine my life without you. 
Francesca, you're everything to me. I don't know how my life would be without you. I love you so much. It's me and you all the way, baby. So that gave us a little bit of an insight on our couple here, our guest couple here tonight. Mm -hmm. So guys, we've already welcomed you onto the show. Yeah. Um, uh, we want to find out a little bit about you because we know that you were very different in terms of your relationship history, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Shall we start with you, Michael? What's the story behind your relationship history before you met Francesca? Well, history-wise with, with, um, with females, I would say that I didn't trust them at all. Mm -hmm. um, I was someone that wasn't really committed to girls. I was looking for girls, but wasn't committed to them. But at the same time, I wasn't committed to them because um, I had encountered a lot of uh, females that you couldn't trust. You know, it, it was a case of the, the, the ones that were more, um, how can I say, eye-catching mm -hmm. were the ones that you had to be careful of because for sure there was another guy that was checking her and you could be talking to her and, and um, wanting to take her out and she'd be playing along wanting you to buy her things and so on but she's got someone else <laughs> she's got someone else it's that she, you know Sorry. that she's got um interest in her as well mm -hmm. so you know so girls were were the truth yeah, you, you were saying you you weren't looking for anything serious you were looking for something serious but you just felt you couldn't trust women yeah why because, because they wanted to him to buy things to them. <laughs> So that one was fun. But you, yeah. you couldn't trust women. Usually there's a reason why a man doesn't trust women or women don't trust men. What was the reason behind that thought? No, I, I think it's more a case of like experiences I'd seen from other examples of my friends, um, elder brothers and so on. And just the environment that I grew up in, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I saw how girls were. So it was a case of... You, you you had something in you that wanted to actually, you know, be kind and, and you know, give your best for that female. But at the same time, you saw that, that they'd want to pay you back in a way that, you know, they don't really care. They just want to use you for what you've got. So. so basically, you were afraid of being cheated on, mistreated. You had, uh, you thought they were going to be unfaithful to you. Yeah. Okay. So that, that caused me to be a bit more colder towards females. Right. So usually, Len, we have women who don't trust men. In this case, it was a man that didn't trust women because of a... But it's interesting, you know. Maybe one of those females, like he refers to, <laughs> you know, those girls, maybe they thought, oh, but he doesn't like commitment. So, you know, I'm not going to be so serious with him. And actually, you And liked, when he was the one yeah. who... But you, you liked commitment. You were just afraid that these women would, would cheat on you. Well, I'd, I'd have to... Be careful how I use the word commitment. I was ready to talk <laughs> mm -hmm. and then we'll see how it goes from there. And, <laughs> right. and let's see. Um, I wasn't looking too far down the future, but mm -hmm. um, Which definitely. is actually <laughs> something that many women don't like because women like men mm -hmm. who think about the future and they, they have the, the very famous question, what's your five-year plan? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you, you had maybe a five-day plan? Yeah, probably about five days, <laughs> five weeks pushing it. <laughs> After that, we'll have to see what happens. Okay. But it's very, very interesting. You know, sometimes the, the woman says, oh, he doesn't commit, men don't commit, because they also are afraid. Mm. So they are both afraid. Mm. Mm. Now, it. if we go to you, Francesca, what, what was your, your story, your relationship history before meeting, getting to, uh, to know Michael? I was quite a bad girl mm -hmm. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. well, I wanted to hurt men. Why? Because of what I saw in my household. Okay. My father, well, he could, you can call him a womanizer. Mm -hmm. He was a womanizer and um, he had two women on the go at the same time, which was my mother and his wife. So seeing... So, so, sorry to continue. So your, your mother was the other woman? Yes. Okay. I was born out of, you know. <laughs> out of wedlock, okay. as they say. Okay. So, um, you know, I was actually in a very confusing environment. I didn't know who was who in the family. I had sisters that I wasn't really aware of. So it was quite confusing. And seeing how my dad treated my stepmom, it hurt me. And the way he treated the females in the family as well, it hurt me. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to hurt men. And I also wanted attention from men because he didn't give me that attention as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would actually be a player. It was, back then it was called a player. And, you know, we'll just use guys for money, <laughs> mm -hmm. cars, you know, clothes, these kind of so, things. Hold on, 
hold on a second. You, you married your worst nightmare. <laughs> Exactly. How, how is that possible? I was not going to get to that one. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure what point I re- I I recalled what I had just done. <laughs> but no, it's no, it's uh, too late. But of course, we, we know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We we know that when you guys got married, Francesca, you had already changed, yeah. right? So yeah. <clears throat> you you had this thing that you you wanted to use men mm-hmm. to take advantage of men because. Mm-hmm. Not because you were a bad person, but because mm. of what you saw happening in your home. Mm-hmm. I mean, how, how did that go? Did that make you happy? Did that bring you some satisfaction? How was it? Sometimes, yeah, because you got the attention from the guy. And I wouldn't just get the attention of the guys saying, you know, I'll take my money and my, my, uh, my car, these kind of things. No, but they actually showed love. You know, I've had a few of them that actually fell in love with me. Mm-hmm. So it made me feel good because that gave me power. Mm-hmm. And that power made me feel really good, and secure about myself. So basically, so. would you use that love as a way to to take what you want, what yeah. you wanted from them? Exactly. Okay, so that love was never a two-way street. You never loved them back. Nah, you I had a rule: don't fall in love. <coughs> okay. Because mm-hmm. when I did, that's when I got hurt. Right. Right. Because my very first relationship, I was hurt. Because it was my sister who said, "Oh, go there with this guy, you know, blind date." Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll you know see how it goes, and he ended up cheating on me. So that bruised <laughs> my heart, wow. and I thought, okay, I never imagine. again get hurt. So yeah. it's interesting because Francesca thought that men are all the same, mm. so let's use them, mm-hmm. and Michael thought that women were all the same, that they would use men. So you both were very cynical mm-hmm. about love, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Did you did you ever think <laughs> you were going to settle down at that point? I couldn't see myself settling down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's interesting, Michael, because you have <coughs> your parents, um, actually, for those who don't know, your, your dad just passed away recently, yeah. unfortunately, but, mm-hmm. but your parents were married for many years. Yeah, over 40 years. 40 years. You had a very good example at home. Yeah. But you didn't look at that example. You looked at the bad examples. That's right. It's, I looked at, instead of looking at the, the, the older and uh, more... Um, better generation in terms of a, a good example. I was looking at the 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 examples around me, my age group, mm-hmm. and um, you know, basically friends and 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 people of of my age and my generation that I was seeing how they were getting things wrong or the problems that they would get into, and that's what caused me to think. Now, look, I'm not going the same way as him, or I need to be careful of her and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. That that's more of the example that I looked at instead. But you see, it's very interesting. People, they usually, um, they, they are, become afraid of something, but they, they don't really think of, okay, hold on, why am I afraid of that? Because you could have seen, oh, okay, I'm not going to do the same mistakes he's done. Yeah. However, he has also done many mistakes, mm-hmm. like he shouldn't have trusted the girl so soon or this. You, you, people never think about mm-hmm. this. It's just, okay, it's the fear. I'm afraid of commitment now. It's something that happens so subtly, yeah. and then it, it can even change a yeah. person's life. Yeah, and, and actually, they're denying themselves a chance of being happy mm-hmm. because they're labeling everybody to be the same, and they're yeah. not allowing themselves to find someone who truly yeah. is different. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. So, Francesca, what what happened that you changed? I mean, you thank you God met, you changed. When you met Michael, you had already mm-hmm. changed, and Michael had dealt with these issues as well. So, what changed in you? What was it that changed you? I wanted to be happy, you know. Mm-hmm. From when I was a child, I did want to have the big white wedding and settle down and be happy. So I said, mm-hmm. why not? Let me go for it. Mm-hmm. Let me find Mr. Right. How, how did you deal with um, all those question marks you had about men that you can't trust men? What did you do? Well, I knew that not all men were the same. <laughs> there had mm-hmm. to be one out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, exactly. you know, I had to work on myself firstly. I needed to make sure that I was confident in myself and that, you know, I wasn't going to look for any guy. You know, I had, I had a, a high standards for myself. Mm-hmm. And um, <coughs> so after working on myself and working on my character and working on the hurt, the, you know, the feelings mm-hmm. that I had against men, put those things aside, got more confident. And then I started looking for Mr. Rack. Okay, and you, you found him. <laughs> He's right there, sitting by your side, Mr. So, what a so responsibility. We, we're going to find out when you guys got married. <laughs> how was it in the beginning? I mean, mm-hmm. was there a clash of cultures, a clash of, of minds, a clash of the way that you guys thought? Because you dealt with these things of the past, but did it still, was it still lingering in the back of your mind? Mm. And we want to know, what did you do to learn to love 
even the bits you didn't love in the beginning about each other because there's always those things that mm -hmm. you don't really love yeah. in the beginning about the yeah. person. You're talking about the annoying habits. Annoying <laughs> habits. Things like that. Okay. Not, not that we have annoying habits, right? Of course not. <laughs> Actually, we have a lot. We always, <laughs> we always share with our viewers. We okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go into a short break before Elena <laughs> says what those annoying habits are about myself, and we'll come back to find out more about Francesca and Michael. Welcome back. So, what have we learned about Michael and Francesca? We learned that Michael uh, didn't trust women because women were always Cheaters trying to take advantage and... of men and cheating. And we learned that Francesca used to use men to take advantage of them. So we learned that Michael, <laughs> but for the fact that Francesca had already changed, he would have married his worst nightmare. Am, are we about right? Um, yes, yeah, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> so thank God that she changed That's before crazy. she yeah. met Indeed. you. And you changed Indeed. as well. Yeah. Now, when you guys got married, usually when two people get married, they're thrown into a house and they start living together, you know, out of the blue. What were the difficulties that you guys had in adapting to each other? Well, I would say um, I've lived a lot of my life by myself mm -hmm. or growing up. I've got brothers and sisters and so on, but they, uh, um, brothers lived in, in Jamaica and so on, and my sister lived elsewhere. So most of the time it's just me growing up by myself, living by myself, so I'm, I'm used to not just having all the attention to myself, but basically not having to worry about others. Mm -hmm. My parents don't really, didn't really disturb me and things like that when I was staying at their house. So then when I got married and then I've got my wife now wanting attention that she did deserve, but I saw it as too much attention. I saw it as she's doing my head in. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I saw it. it. It started to get annoying. It started to become like, no, this is, this is too much. So... That was really hard. What, what, give, me, give us an example of how she would do your head in. Well. A, a, according to you. According right? to me. Uh -huh. I, I think, like I said, uh, one of the worst examples is, because my wife, she likes to talk. Mm -hmm. and Every woman does. Well, yeah, every yes. woman does. But the thing <laughs> I is, agree with that. is like, you, when you choose, the t it's, it's about choosing the right time to talk. So when she would choose the time to talk, was when I wanted to watch football. So that was the worst time. Oh, hold on, hold on. Do you, you either watch too much football. Exactly. Or you don't I have will, much will, time to talk. Because <laughs> if she only talks when you're playing football, there's a Thank problem. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, there's, I thought there was plenty of times that we could have spoken. But if okay. you want to start bringing up conversations on 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 the days that you want to watch a game or something. And, which and then is every after, day, right? Well, then afterwards <laughs> getting angry that I'm not listening to you. The program's an hour and a half or something. <laughs> we didn't need to talk during that time. So that was really, that was really hard. I mean, but that's an example. Okay. I mean, uh, you, for you, you felt that she was asking too much attention. <coughs> yeah, that's right. And usually women don't ask too much attention. Mm. They ask attention that mm. they deserve. But a man sometimes, I'm not saying this was your case, but usually a man, what he does is that he works really hard to, to conquer his wife and then he wants to put her on a trophy cabinet and leave her there and mm. not look after her. And that doesn't really work. And honestly, I don't, just between you and I here, I don't think she talked too much. Maybe mm. he, because you just said that you, you know, a woman talks more than a man, okay? There are rules, yeah. exceptions uh, rather. But perhaps because you were so used to your own space and and being maybe you are a quiet kind of person. Yeah. I and mean, you come across like this more mm -hmm. quiet, more, you know, my space, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. my time. <laughs> you know, she's exactly. different, so maybe that's why. What, what about you, Francesca? What did you have exactly. what did you struggle with? That honestly, that's what I struggled with. Because I'm a very um, outgoing, bubbly person and I grew up with four sisters. So we we're Whoa, always what talking. a noisy house. Exactly. <laughs> always talking, always laughing, you know, always communicating. So when we got together, that was missing. There was just no communication. It was really difficult for me because that was my husband. That's the only one I wanted to talk to. I didn't want to talk to anyone else. I didn't want to take, you know, any problems to family or friends. What stayed, what happened in the house stayed in the house. So every time I wanted to talk, football, mm -hmm. football. <laughs> 
But you know, for football wow. is about what three times a week, maybe yes. at the most. Highlights. Twice. Uh, twice. Highlights. <laughs> you know, no, some people like to listen to football on the radio as well and online. online I don't know what, what was your case. Catch up, right? For the. Mm. <laughs> you see, she already knows everything. <laughs> so I mean, how how did you solve that? I mean, that's that's one example. Yeah. But how how did you solve that problem? <clears throat> I, is it true that once Michael was watching football and you walked in front of the TV? <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that day. Well, I was annoyed. I was really annoyed that day. And I, you know when something's happened and you really need to talk to someone? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to him. So I, as soon as he came home, I was like, look, I need to talk to you. Oh, no, later, later. So I need to talk to you now. And he ignored me, went there, sat down, started to eat. Watch well, football. husbands what? just love the word later. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Later. But carry on, we'll go to that <laughs> later. <laughs> so I was like, no, not later. So I went in front of the television and I was like, no, now. And mm -hmm. he just looked at me and he was like, this, like, <laughs> this woman is doing my head in. <laughs> I could see that in his face. So, wow. I mean, how, how so, do you solve that problem? Yeah, how did we solve that problem? Oh, I, what I think was a case of give and take. Mm. started to learn that, you know, I, ne I did need to make more time. Um, mm. But I think it was a case of also talking that, we, we needed, to find, needed to find the right times to do certain mm -hmm. things. So, for, for instance, it's not a case of only I watched something on TV. She would watch certain things. And if you were to reverse the question now and, <laughs> and see what things she would like to watch, then, you know, there would be times that I had to make sure that I didn't, you know, disturb her in that time, that moment, because obviously she, you know, something she was mm -hmm. enjoying. So we needed to make sure that we, we could find the right time to be able to, to speak, um, um, about things and you know you know cut down sacrifice on certain things so for example we're talking about learning to love you you had to learn to love to talk that's right <laughs> because yeah. I, I know you for many years Michael you know, you're not the most talkative person right mm, on the face that of that explains right? it <laughs> so you, you had to learn to love I mean today do you do you like to do you love to talk to your wife yeah, I'm still learning more. <laughs> uh, it's like, been, I what, like 13 years? No, he's much better. He's much better. No, 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 it's better. He talks a lot now, actually. And, and you, Francesca, I mean, did you learn to love his side that loves football, that likes football? Yeah, I, I tried a few things. I tried sitting down and actually watching the football game mm -hmm. and asking questions. Not too much questions, because mm -hmm. I know that's annoying as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the offside I, rule and stuff know, like yeah, that. Yeah, I learned a little bit about the teams, Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So I said I became a Liverpool fan. <laughs> All <laughs> right. You know, we don't yeah. accept Liverpool people <laughs> here. Uh, there, there was someone, there's someone that I know, I was watching a match once and and this person was trying to understand the game. Oh, he's talking about me now. And then, and then she said, look, how come there's only one dressed in black? Isn't that unfair? Because one team has 11, <laughs> the other one has one in black. I said, no, that's the referee. <laughs> that's the referee. At least, at least I, was trying, I was making an effort. Exactly, that's okay. what I had to do. But, but that's important to learn to love even your, yeah. your partners. Mm. Uh, interests, even if you don't really like them, mm -hmm. because that's that's who you got to marry you, and you inherited their likes, which you may dislike as well. Do you think that's important in a relationship? Definitely, sure. definitely. If this you is... go ahead. No, if if we don't learn to love the 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 opposite things mm -hmm. in our partner, then then I don't know how you can call it a, a relationship mm -hmm. that you know, it's going to have... Or have peace. Yeah, it's always going to... It's, it's going to be anything that you're going to learn from because that, that's how you learn. That's how you learn to love because you, there are things in in your partner that you don't know about or you're not used to or you may dislike, so you need to learn to like that. Mm -hmm. And some of the things you do learn are actually quite good for the other person mm -hmm. because it makes you a better person. It makes you, you know, grow in yourself as well. So it is important mm -hmm. that both parties mm -hmm. come to a common ground. Yeah. All right. So, for example, Michael, it, it made you a better person now that you talk more and you're more expressive and, and you try to listen to, to her needs. Would you agree with that? No, definitely. <laughs> and also, and mm. also that you, Francesca, you respect his football time, yes. his sacred football his time, sacred time, and that you talk other. No? I live yeah. into it. <laughs> and, and, and the interesting thing is that sometimes we were watching, we may even fall asleep during the match. It doesn't matter, you, just can't, you can't disturb us because even if we sleep, No, listen to time. me, I need, I need to reveal something. <laughs> we're running out of time. You love football, right? I know, you see, now we're running out of time. <laughs> every time Saturday evening, that little song starts on TV, like, 
Sometimes he's like this. Because <laughs> he's, he's, he's relaxing, he was waiting for the football. And then I tried more than once to go there, switch the channel because he was sleeping and was like, hold on! And that teaches you a lesson. The football is on. That teaches you a lesson, you can't do that. Oh my okay. God. So Guys, funny. thank you so much for being on the show. We, we, have, actually, we have actually uh, run out of, of time. And, yeah. and actually, uh, you guys are moving uh, to another country to work there. So we want to wish you the best. Indeed. Thank you. And maybe our paths with, will cross again one day. Yeah. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you for okay. coming. Thank Thank you. You. Now, the, the important thing to understand about your partner is that you will not always like everything about them. And certainly you will discover things you may not necessarily like. The important thing is to know that you can learn to mm. love these things. Just like you learn to love an activity or a food or a culture, you can learn to love someone. Absolutely. And also learning to love is also a form of respect mm. because you need to respect, we need, I need to respect my husband's personality. <coughs> there will be things in him that I cannot change. Actually, I cannot change him, mm -hmm. but I need to respect him because he's an individual, he's a person. Like, I don't want people to change my likes, things that I like. I should also respect him and, and get used to he, mm -hmm. the things that he likes. Absolutely. And That's how it goes. And I think if you are to take one thing from tonight's program is this. Don't subscribe to the thought and the idea that a lot of people have today of I've fallen out of love mm -hmm. with someone. You know, you don't fall out of love. Perhaps you stopped investing in that relationship and that's why you don't feel like as close to that person as you used to. Remember, you learned to love that person once. You can learn to love them again. And Indeed. that is a fact. I hope that tonight's program has been informative and it has helped you. And we'll be back here again with you next week. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm.